It's been a few years since my 5 reasons to buy a Leica M8 video was first published, so I thought it was time for a review. And I can say straight away that I like the camera. Scratch that, I love this camera. It's my favorite Leica and one of my all-time favorite cameras altogether. And the number one reason for that is the image quality. The colors you get from this 10 megapixel CCD sensor are awesome. So are the tonality in the black and white. Little to no grading is needed for an organic and pleasing look. So we can avoid the whole it's just a red dot discussion. I actually prefer the black dot. Or even better, no dot. And I'm not just saying that because this is the one I have. I have actually had the M8, M8.2, M9, M9 Monochrome, T, Q, X1 and M6. So I feel like I have a pretty good idea about the brand as a whole. Price is something we might as well get out of the way early as well. This is cheap. In Leica M terms it's practically for free. You can find it used for a thousand bucks or so. And if Leica or Voigtlander lenses are out of your budget, you can look at for example brands like Seven Artisans or vintage M39 lenses like this Canon 35mm f1.8, which I got for very little money. There are also plenty of Soviet lenses to play around with. Why Leica cost as much as they do is obvious when holding it. The craftsmanship is outstanding. The M8 is all brass and feels very solid. If you buy a black M8.2, which is basically an M8 with a slower shutter and better glass on the screen, it is painted with the intention of wearing off quicker to give you a lovely brass patina. I used to like that look the best, but lately I've started to shift towards this black chrome finish. And you can always tape over the red dot so thieves don't mistake it for an expensive camera. It sits nicely in the hand. I use a thumbs up for when not using a neck or wrist strap. Speaking of which, the included neck strap is kinda ugly, but it's light and very comfortable. The layout is as simple as it gets. On the top we find the on-off switch which also chooses single, continuous and timer. In case you didn't know, this isn't exactly a sports camera, so single it is. Next to it we find the shutter speed wheel. Both have very satisfying and tactile clicks. There is also a little window that houses the battery indicator and shots left on the SD card. But honestly, the battery indicator drops a bit fast to be useful and with today's SD cards I've never seen anything lower than 999. And that's with a 32GB card. While we are down here we also see the battery. It lasts quite some time compared to modern mirrorless cameras if you buy a fresh one. One thing to mention is the M8 charger. It's a monstrosity. That's why I have bought a used charger for the M8.2 and M9 on eBay. Much smaller and nicer. On the front we have the lens release for the M mount lenses and a frame selector switch. The camera chooses the frame lines in the viewfinder automatically, but you can pull the lever to get an idea of what you would get if you switched lenses. I've used that feature maybe three times over the years. On the back we have a cover for the USB port, which I've never used, a couple of self-explanatory buttons and a scroll wheel and D-pad. The menu is very short and intuitive, the only button you ever really gonna use is the settings menu to adjust your ISO.
this camera doesn't have live view, no EVF and you don't look through the lens. Instead it has one of the features that separates it from the rest, a good old fashioned rangefinder. This is one of those love or hate features, I love it, being able to pinpoint the focus fast and accurate. And when not using that I use zone focus, which to this day is faster than any autofocus I've ever used when shooting on the streets. To help you set exposure there is a classically styled meter, which I dig a lot. Arrows point you to where you need to turn the aperture or shutter. When in aperture priority it shows you which speed it intends to use. One note on the rangefinder, when using thick gloves I sometimes cover the other window it uses for the focusing patch. Not a big deal, just thought I'd mention it. While we are on the subject of exposure, let's talk about the elephant in the room. The one thing that always seems to scare people when I review old digital cameras like Leica or Sigma. ISO. I mean, can you really take pictures without ISO 4000 or 6400? And can you only use a Leica in bright sunlight? To put things in perspective, I live in Sweden, and right now it's the darkest period with only a few hours of daylight each day. Plus it's been raining with heavy overcasts and fog all winter. In other words, it's pretty much as dark as civilization gets. And yet ISO 160 and 320 works out for me. Ok, I'm not doing night for day HDR here, but hey, this is closer to what I actually saw when taking these. So I'm gonna say like I usually do on this subject, treat it like a film camera. ISO 400, 100 or even 50 film have been used for 100 years. Get a fast lens and you will be fine. Or get a flash. Now if I like it so much, why don't I like the M9 better? I mean it's full frame instead of the M8's APS-H with a 1.3 times crop and almost double the resolution. Well, I like the extra reach of the M8 and I don't feel it holding me back on the wide angles. And there is no risk for sensor corrosion on the M8 and the M9 is twice the cost. Ok, but what about the M8's weak IR cut filter, which means you need screw on filters if you want to avoid IR pollution? The answer is, who cares? First of all, the filter protects the lens. Secondly, it doesn't always occur. I often skip the filter since it doesn't happen as much as one might think, even on black fabrics, which usually triggers it. And thirdly, without the IR cut filter, the black and whites are almost in the same league as the three times more expensive M9 monochrome. So to sum up, is this the perfect end all camera? No. Is it a lovely camera for people who like the involved shooting style that an all manual rangefinder gives? Oh yes. And if you like me love the image quality from the CCD as well, there isn't much out there that can replace it. I mean I use these lenses on Sony and Fuji, the X-Pro2 even looks like a rangefinder, but that's just it. It isn't a rangefinder and I like rangefinders. And I like the shooting style with the Leica, the build quality, that it shoots native raw DNGs, that it's an M mount and that it's decently priced. So I still highly recommend this camera for people looking to get into the system and shooting style. Just be aware that this is a camera announced over 10 years ago, so make sure it works before buying. And try to score one with a fresh battery or take the price of a new one into account. That's it, have a look at my older M8 video and follow me on Instagram for new pictures every day. Until next time, goodbye.